think that uh, I said in the talk, you know, that we're in the earliest stages of healing from a very early trauma, whether you believe that that trauma was just a matter of earth cataclysms or something else, alien visitation or what have you. The fact is trauma occurred, and it occurred a blink of the eye ago. Out of that tragedy came the sorcery that, you know, like Professor Lewis, C.S. Lewis said, the dark wing has gone so far east that it has become west, so far west that it has become east. Does that mean everything is hopeless? No, because it's early days. We're actually, whether we know it or not, in the healing process, and it takes time. Part of that healing is to know that enemy and what weapons that enemy is using. Part of that solution is not to further, like we were talking outside, like Tex was saying, the, you know, the, the conversations we have with people that you come here is one of the most inspiring things in my life. Because I'm a goddamn hermit. You know, I don't even go out. Shopping is a hassle. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just study, study, study. So when we come out and we talk, and it's really good to change the energy and, and to hear what you're all saying, and the feedback is very important. And outside, talking with a couple, and we're talking about we have to watch out for strangling ourselves in our attempts to be free of their web. Like a fly. If you approach this from panic, if you approach it from fear, if you approach it from unhealthy forms of anger or any of these other dysfunctional ways, it, you will in, end up becoming like a strangled fly in your very attempts to free yourself because they already know that man's inherent atomistic desire is freedom. Right? It's not negotiable. It's in every single person. It's, as I, I talked about earlier, it's even in, in the anatomy of the thing we call the ego. In the absolute dictionary definition of the ego, it means that part of us that differentiates itself from all forms of collectivism and mind control, right? They know that. So they've designed the web to be so intricate so that even in your attempts to free yourself, you enslave yourself. Therefore, attitude now comes in as the salvation. Because you have, like Tex was saying, you have to be focused on truth. You have to be very still. How many people have seen the, the, the movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly? We're, we're in movie mode, right? My talk was about me. Watch the end scene when the anti-hero is perched on that cross, and he knows that his only chance of being set free is to be absolutely still. If you're having surgery, you can't be jiggling around on the table while the knife is going in. You have to be absolutely still. And all the stimuli of the world is to make sure that you can't do that. It's to delay the healing process. But when the, what is happening now, I believe, is that there's a, a sea change, and the scalpel of cleansing is, is here. The surgery is taking place. But that means that attitudinally and spiritually, you have to be absolutely still, right? Like a martial artist, completely yin. And only then do you hear that still, small voice that gives you, not the mass, not the we, not the us, not the our, but your individual guidance is within you. And we are in an age of awakening. And there are no shortcuts. And you have to have absolute 100% conviction that evil has within it the seeds of its own destruction. It is unsustainable. And it is now ready to pop. And they are in deadly fear of us. Most people don't understand this. You have no reason to be in trepidation, angst, or fear because they are the ones in fear. They are the psychopaths and you're living in their forensic filth. They are the ones in fear. And if you, if you imbibe or you get virally contaminated by their thinking, if you identify with the objects of your hate, if you identify with their way of thinking, then you fall to a lower place and you start thinking as they do and you're infected by their psychopathy. So in your, and, and there's no A to Z. Each of you must find the way to sustain that cleansing. Dance, music, yoga, music, sound, learning, teaching, intellectual, whatever it might be, travel, art, painting, each one discover their own bliss, as Joseph Campbell used to say. Come to the still point, said T.S. Eliot. There the dance is. In that place, you will find your connection, and that's where the magic will take place. Not give in to their whole leviathan of fear mechanisms and trepidation. Step aside from that, find your sovereignty, because if you don't have the psychic and spiritual sovereignty, politicians can be running around like the Keystone cops with this plan and that plan, and you're never going to see a sovereign world. Sovereignty starts within. It starts in your psyche, in your emotions, in your spirit, in your attachment to truth. That's where it starts and ends. Oh, but uh, the lady who was just speaking uh, before me 
she's a mind control victim of the CIA. And uh, if we're ever going to get the females of our country involved, we need to get, and I'm sure you all agree, we need to help touch the issues on child abuse at every one of these conferences. At least have one female here talking about that. It's critical. So I'm going to uh, put two of my dearest friends up there on the spot here. Uh, first of all, uh, I've got some Jewish blood texts, and uh, uh, I married a uh, German Ashkenazi Jew, Meyerhoff. And uh, I was very supportive of what you had to say yesterday. I was here for the whole speech. But I want you to know that uh, I got feedback from quite a few people who were not even Jews and felt like you were too hard because you didn't, and I make this point myself, you didn't stress the Ashkenazi Jew, the difference, and that the 80% of the Jews in the world are not even uh, from uh, the tribe of Israel. They're, uh, you know, Ashkenazis. And they say this in their own publications. So I would hope in the future you would stress that. And so uh, then I, uh, so I hope you'll address that when I finish. And the other one, of course, is a dear friend, uh, Dr. Len Horowitz. Uh, Len, as you know, I put, sent you an email uh, here last week regarding the fact that uh, you've accepted this. Uh, okay, thank you. You've accepted this uh, a title of nobility, a knighthood. And uh, in the U.S. Constitution, you know, says no one is allowed to have a title of nobility in America. And the 13th, the original 13th Amendment stated that anyone who accepts the title of nobility in a past at the war, at, during the war, a war of 1812 stated that anyone who accepts the title of nobility loses their citizenship. So I'm going to ask you right here in front of everybody to please rescind and turn away, get rid of your knighthood. That's a tough question. Even on. It was, it's not on. answer that one. Yeah. OK. Can you maybe just repeat that for you? Yeah. That last comment. OK. Two, I'm sorry. Uh, that uh, then I have to go through this again, but uh, put you on the spot again. Evidently, the uh, mic is okay. Uh, as you know, the uh, original uh, Constitution states very specifically that there is, and I've got it right here. I've got the wrong book for this. Common sense. Here's the uh, Constitution. It states that the uh, titles of nobility are banned in the U.S. Constitution. And then the original 13th Amendment, which was passed during the War of 1812, stated that uh, since there was no teeth in there, that anyone who accepts the title of nobility loses their citizenship of America. So I'm asking you publicly, as a dear friend, to please get rid of your knighthood that you accepted, because as you, if you didn't know, and you know now, and I'm asking you to publicly rescind your knighthood. I want to thank Doug Millar, who has been a friend of mine for years, for asking that very, very important question. And I want to thank uh, Tex for articulating an answer to the concern regarding Jew Judaism and this whole concept that is intimately related to the question that I was asked. They really stem from the same place, and I'm going to try to explain that. To answer your question directly, this is news to me, brother, that I would need to give up my citizenship of the United States to accept a knighting. If that's the case, I would like to sit down with you and look at what the benefit would be for me to ev either give up my citizenship of the United States or give up my knighting. When I accepted the honor of the knighthood from the Knights Hospitaller of St. John of Jerusalem that predates the Knights of Malta, there was at that time really spirit-filled Christians who felt the love of God and went to do battle for the people, for we the people at the time. The word hospital sources from the Knights Hospitaller. And that they set up clinics for treating people 
of every religion, race, war victims, and that that organization went defunct. It went defunct because of the same illness that we suffer from right here, right now, is that the division of we the people, the sheeple, to conquer the flock was very well administered back then as it is today. The question about this issue of the Jew world order that triggers my concerns as well as every other Jew that sits in this audience and around the world, as I'm very thankful to Tex for articulating a clearer explanation because it makes me a Jew who has accepted the love of Yeshua in my heart and because of that I have been ostracized from the Jews and because of my 19 I have been ostracized from the Patriots who the community I served since our dear friend Ted Gunderson and I met each other about 15 years ago at Patriot meetings and worked together so the history right now looks to me like if you understood the history of the Knights Hospitaller, how it went defunct because of the political chaos, the division, the manipulations, the, the profiteering and egos that plague us today, you can well understand that the original forces of good in the knighthood of the Hospitallers was decimated and it went underground and it was eliminated for probably about 400 years. And then the group of guys, colleagues, peers, that I accepted the knighthood from by the invitation of an ostracized prince from Russia who was thrown out of Russia and came to live in New York and then established the, again, resurgent Knights Hospitaller of St. John of Jerusalem with the intention to create an alternative medicine and an alternative health care, in fact, free clinics established internationally, which is being currently advanced by the World Organization for Natural Medicine, led by a sister, Sheila McKenzie, from Toronto, that this organization had fully and still fully intends to do something right for the good and the grace of God and the merciful caring of people who are victims of war and we are, as I mentioned in my presentation, all right now victims of war. United States of America, in my humble opinion, is no more. It's over that if I were to give up my citizenship of the United States of America, I would celebrate it, frankly, because I would be giving up my enslavement to Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and the Rothschild Rockefeller cartel. Yeah. 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 So I really thank you because this issue whether you're dealing with a Jew or whether you're dealing with a knight. Listen to the words of Yeshua, Jesus, who said, ye shall know them by their fruit. That if my fruit is so distasteful to anyone who considers himself a Christian or a patriot, the fact that my knighthood occurred because I was honored for specifically the fruit of alerting populations all over the planet to the risks of vaccinations and because of that saved hundreds of thousands of children's lives. If for that I need to be judged. <laughs> and give up my citizenship or my knighthood. I'm happy to die right now because I know my boss is going to judge me far more kindly. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Uh, test. Hey, Doug, Doug, where are you? Can, can you hear me? Can you? Uh, Doug, it's, I mean, I, I, I love you, my brother, man. It's been great to have you with us for nine years, but you really don't know the real me, nor do many of you, actually. My, 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 my full name is Sir William Hallberg. 
and uh, I just thought you should know that. But uh, I, I, it's out now. I, I just like to, Brian. I just like to make a comment in respect in response to uh, Dr. Horowitz's uh, discussion of his knighthood. Now, as I always say to my friends, I'm the biggest conspiracy theorist of them all. I've been accused of that, and I do uh, have a lot of views about a lot of things and conspiracies. But uh, I would have to say this about it, and, and I don't know the whole history of that organization. I've heard a lot about it. But I do tend to think, and I mentioned this to a gentleman here earlier. Now, we are conspiracy theorists, or as, as Tex says, we're searching for facts. But a lot of times there are a lot of rumors and insinuations about organizations that may have been true at one time or may have never been true at all, and they become fact, quote unquote fact, because everybody talks about them. And now with the internet there are so many stories and legends and rumors that circulate that sometimes totally innocent organizations become entangled in conspiracy theories that present them as something less than benevolent. And I think, I think we ought to give Dr. Horowitz a benefit of the doubt here because uh, I don't think uh, he, he was selected. If this is an insidious organization, uh, his public record, so far as I know, doesn't indicate that he's an insidious man. Uh, quite the contrary. So I think maybe we can give him the benefit of the doubt and, and let him keep his American citizenship. Thanks, brother. Thanks for the vote of confidence. You know, I actually did a lot. My, my wife had said to me, if you do this, you're going to get a lot of people upset. And you know, that's funny because that's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. Because if you understand the relationship that you personally have with your creator and the blessing that you have of intuition and this communication divine that's in your heart, then you shall know the truth within you. You don't have to look to anyone on this panel and say, because of them, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, you know the truth that shall set you free within your heart. I do everything to, to really challenge your own sense of self, your own sense of self-esteem, your own relationship with the Creator, and I tell you right up front, don't listen to me. Do your own due diligence. Do your own research. And, you know, I've done some other things. I've posted symbols of me holding an owl on my website. Just to play on the foolish understanding that this question brings. I love you dearly, brother, but really, it's a lower level of intelligence that I'm observing. And we have got to lift ourselves out of this illusion of deception and, and, and ultimately this... Uh, lift ourselves out of the illusion that we are separate that I would have highly encouraged you, my brother, to have done the courtesy, being friends of all these years, to have done exactly what the first fellow who wrote that scathing article that David Icke posted and made famous, basically telling me that I was serving the Pope and reporting directly to the Pope, and Frankly, the idiocy of this, my brother Tex Mars will tell you because he knows scripture inside out. You're supposed to keep your friends closer and your enemies closer. Isn't that right, brother? Uh, I heard that. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's in the scriptures, but it's a pretty good maxim. You know? Well, the, and the question becomes, if the Pope himself called you, Doug, and said to you, I really appreciate what you do, because the fact of the matter is there's no organization thus far been as firmly opposed to vaccination intoxications. They came out directly opposed to the, to, to the 
tetanus vaccinations that included the HCG human chorionogonadotrophic hormone that was given to tens of thousands of women all over the world, including the United States of America. If you look at the black population in urban America today, 25% at least of the black women are sterile. And they got sterile because they were injected with a sterilizing agent in the vaccinations. And the only main organizations inter internationally that came up opposing this and articulating it in their press was the Roman Catholic Church. Now, if the Pope himself were to call you, Doug, and say to you, Doug, you know, I really appreciate what it is that you've done here. We totally agree with you, and we want to knight you and celebrate you and how we want to take what you do and we want to broadcast it all over the world. Are you telling me seriously that you would decline the invitation to go to Rome? Now, now, I think that's stupidity. Frankly, now I, I have not done that. I have never received a phone call from the Pope. But frankly, I think we would be absolutely insane because ultimately, if we're all brothers and sisters from a single divine source and we have this illusion of separation and we have a spiritual calling to be of optimal service to not only each other but the Creator, then we've got to get it together. And I'm not I'm going to stand here or sit here and be afraid of discussing anything. I'm not going to be afraid to, and censor my reporting on Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, working with Sherry Kane, exposing this film tonight, Pharma Whores. There's never been anything like this in history. If I was afraid, I wouldn't be doing that. Nor would I be afraid of going to the Vatican, sitting down with the Pope, and delivering the same message we're delivering in Pharma Whores that says, you and J.P. Morgan Chase, Rothschild, Rockefeller, it is time to set we the people go free. I will, make, I will make this very brief. I'm disappointed, Len, that you put it on an insulting basis here. Because I, you've been very insulting to me, and I'm disappointed in your tactics here. But my point is, no one in America nor the world has done what you've done to make vaccines the issue of the, uh, to help save our country. I've, my own daughter has never had her daughters vaccinated, and so I thank you. But that does not take away from the issue that we're talking about here. We're talking about the 13th Amendment was passed. I have a copy of it from Colorado, from the Secretary of State. It was passed and on the law books for 50 years until, so the point is, we need to deal with that issue. And you could help by making this a national issue that everyone in America will learn about the fact that we had an original 13th Amendment that was destroyed by throwing away your knighthood and going public with it. So I ask you to do this again. Well, I, I appreciate that, Doug, and, and I'm, I'm not opposed to doing that. I, I just think that the issue won't be resolved. The issue is the division, and I, I meant no slighting. I think it's just simply plain dumb that we human beings, the dumbed-down mind control slaves that we have become, can't see beyond this false division and these theological, ideological separations of which this is a, a wonderful example. You know, in the past, again, I go back because it's such a critical issue. The most important issue is whether or not we've got a Jew world order happening right now, whether that is a, that, that issue is like Yeshua said, beware of those who call themselves Jews who are not. Who are these people? Who has the inkling to do us in? That's far more an issue. If you want me to say, okay, I'm going to give up my knighthood because that's going to increase X amount of the population coming to realize that those who call themselves Jews who are not are decimating our populations, killing our children, and making we parents having to sustain incredible uh, losses, financial, emotional, having to care for all of these 
my neuro neurologically impaired children, if it's going to help, I'll do it in a second. But right now, I can't conceive that that issue is going to help. I'm primarily interested in, one, serving the Creator and serving humanity in general. And if, what I, if my role in doing that, which is to challenge you to rethink whether this knighting, just like my colleague shared, whether this knighting means so much more than all of the other critical issues. I'll do it in an instant, but you, you're not going to be able to, I don't believe, I'm happy to sit with you, if, if you think you're going to be able to use my resignation from knighthood as a marketing campaign that's going to be able to raise consciousness regarding what's really happening on this planet, making the critical global issues the focus instead of who is Dr. Leonard Horowitz and should we judge him, I'll do it. But I, I, I don't see you being able to do that, brother. I would say that would be a conversation. I got a comment on this. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, just sort of re-emphasizing what Doug was talking about. Are you actually an American? Am I American? Yes. Yeah, I was born in Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. Very proud of that. And you do not feel that it is the height of a scandal to accept a knighthood from orders that have worked to undermine this country from day one? Well, well as I said, it was an honor for me because it was in, given in recognition of this work by colleagues who began to evolve this vision, which is better than anything that you have done thus far, my brother. I love what the work that you're doing, but in terms of collaborations and actually administration of beneficial social programs that will bring about something extremely beneficial. But Doug's not making that point. He is, he is trying to say, if you accept one knighthood from this gang, uh, why not just go and join the Mafia? Why not join Opus Dei? You know, it's like the thin end of the wedge. I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying also. And then the, uh, the final point I want to make is, do me a favor, could you define the term Jesuitical argument? Would I define Jesuitical argument? Yeah, for uh, people. I'm, I'm fairly ignorant when it comes to Jesuits. I, uh, yeah, but it's not that term. There's a term called Jesuitical, right? you know, sophistry. And I'm hearing a lot of it in what you're saying. I'm not condemning you, and uh, I also don't violate your personal right to make the decisions whether you took it or not. That's your private affair, and I'm very much against that kind of invasion in the person's private space, you know? But at the same time, because of my background and understanding of, of people who do want to then cover up their reasons and their raison d'etre for doing something and m maintain a camouflage, they often use Jesuitical arguments. <coughs> which is a very convenient and clever, sophisticated way of avoiding the main issue. And you've been doing a beautiful job at it, if, 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 we, look at, if we look at it from that angle. That's all I'm saying. Okay, uh, so well, let, let me ask you. Gentlemen, what? gentlemen, actually, we probably ought to let the folks ask some questions. It might be a conversation to have uh, at, at some other time. So we can get to some of the questions. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, I love all of you guys. I really love all of you guys. But let's, let's give these folks an opportunity to cover some other uh, areas. Moving on. Thank you very much. One last question. I don't know what a conspiracy conference would be without a conspiracy. And it looks like we already had a little one over here with Dr. Horowitz. I just want to say this about that. Um, <laughs> I mean, what would a conspiracy conference be, huh? Uh, is, as far as the nighting goes, if that would really, you know, rescind your citizenship. I don't see what the problem with that is. Why would you want to be a citizen of the corporation of the United States to begin with? Which I think he's trying to say. Uh, which kind of leads into my other point. Um, I've been studying this for about 10 years now. All the various conspiracies, you name it. And I've heard people talk about trying to reform the system, trying to infiltrate it. From my point of view, it's unreformable. It's too corrupt. It's corrupt from the very core, from the very organization, which is hierarchical, 
as is a corporation, as is the government, as is the media, as is all of it, why would you think that you can reform something like that? Why not opt out? Does any, I mean, if we weren't so alienated and atomized and so busy with our own little I was talking problems. about, the, I said, why hold on, why hold on to it? Why it's, hold it's on to it? Why not just corrupt. let it go? But people can't do that. The whole, my, were you at my talk? I, I was. Right. Yes. The whole point is we cling like monkeys to the rotten sweets when the gooey good stuff is, you know, being offered to us. And this, this pathological identification with their thinking, it's happened subconsciously. It's happened through identification and many elaborate psychological processes. You see, all the stuff in the worldly domain, right, it's just the art picturing, it's the, it's the outward external form of something that's happening psychically, that's happening spiritually. We have spiritually identified with psychopaths, and we don't know what psychopathy is. We are identifying with the insane because we've forgotten what sanity is. We've lost the still point. We're not grounded, we're not rooted. We don't give a monkey's ass about our grandparents and the traditions of the past. You know, and then we wonder why we're feeling rootless. Uh, the pestilence has been going on from royal dynasties you know, for centuries, which is why we have bugbears you know, about Dr. Horowitz. It's, it's, it, and uh, again, my point was that you know, it's very, we must draw the line where we violate a person's sovereign right to do whatever he wants to do, swing from the chandelier, run around in the streets naked, you know, uh, be knighted, whatever. We have our concerns. I'm sure you understand that. You're a very advanced being, and you know that. But we also must not violate the sovereign you know, rights of another person because then we become like them. So what I'm saying is that that is an example of what I'm talking about. We have identified with their pathology. I believe you were trying to say the same thing anyway. And we have to watch that in ourselves because why fight the tyrants up there when we're doing it in our homes? True. Have you observed how people treat their animals? Have you, treat, have you observed how mothers treat their children? I have. Or, yes, right. So have I. And so there's, a, there's lots of different complexions to tyranny. Right? It's not just up there in the corridors of power. It's very, it's here, it's right here. And much of it is even psychic. Much of it is understated. And I, I personally believe that's one of the worst kinds. So the identification with that pathology it needs to be addressed and looked at. And you're right. Why try to prop up, sustain, reinvigorate the rotten carcass, this filthy, degenerate, perverted system that was built out of the, of the, of the most poisonous creatures that have ever been, uh, you know, unfortunate enough to live on this planet. Buckminster Fuller said, if you don't like the system, wait till it crumbles and then invent a new system to replace the one that you don't like. That takes work. But we don't want to do that, which is why we rely on Big Brother to come in and help it, and then he'll just have a 2.0, tyranny 2.0. We've been doing that. <laughs> and how many times have they rolled it up and folded it up and then it comes another one, which includes all of these various other divisions and, and, and all of these... Uh, different schisms, you see, they, they, they breed this dichotomy. Because once you've accepted one form of dualism, that just immediately becomes a virus. There's dualisms just pour out once you've accepted one. This is the whole satanic principle. Once you can be deluded about one thing, then it's non-stop. The, just, the, the fabric becomes unraveled, and that's what's happened. And we're down to trying to put the pieces back together again, you know. But you see, we have to watch our, our need to rely on the other to do that. It's an, an instantly a statement of your disempowerment. You have to observe and become unbelievably aware of how you disempower yourself on a daily basis, both politically and in other, every other way. You've become, you have to become, you have to really microanalyze that. Like I said, like the Bruce Lee concept, become still. I didn't mean inactive and zombie-like. I meant still so that you can observe carefully what you're doing to yourself and to other people. And when we even conceive of a sort of a political paradigm of this is going to make change and that's going to do this and this person's going to do this for me. You know, we're already subconsciously disempowering ourselves and moving out of center and that's when Big Brother's eyes open. That's when the vulture is interested. You see, because they, they know that. They, 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 have, they have a whole Leviathan to get you out of that center. So, but then again, here's, here's, here's the thing. There's no, I can't, and then people will go, all right, Michael, tell us how to do it. Or Pope Ratzinger, tell us how to do it. There is no A to Z. This is the whole essence of selfhood. Only you can walk your path for, for you. The only message that we can give you is do it fearlessly. Open your heart, do it fearlessly. Don't buy into their bullshit because they can't move. They're static. I mean, these people are morbid and static, and that's a whole other subject. But the thing is, there's no A to Z. There's no map. And even if there is a map, somebody can show you the map. They can't walk the topography for you. 
the doctor does not get into the bed with a patient who's sick. He can only suggest what you should do for yourself, both medically and also I say the same thing psychologically. So there's no A to Z manual. Each individual must find their bliss, their dharma, and work with that. And then that inspires the rest. That has a chain effect. You know, uh, people think, oh, we're so big head honchos up here. We've done nothing but what I'm just telling you we've done. There's no difference except that maybe, you know, some of us have tapped into that in our own ways. That's the only thing that makes us unique at all. But the thing is that that's within us all, and we must find that, and then again make sure that you've realized, this is my last point, beware, be vigilant of all the forces that stop you doing that, because it's a twofold thing. You have the desire to go forward, but there's also impediments in your way. It's catabolic and anabolic. It's Shiva and it is Shakti. It is Nagual and it is Tonal. It is Yin and it is Yang. It is masculine and feminine and so on. You have to know what you want and your goal and, your, and how to get it, but you must ups, become absolutely fundamentally and incredibly scientifically aware of all the obstacles that stand in the way of you and your selfhood. That's what we're here for on this planet. That's the education. The rest will be taken care of by that higher force. You don't, you're not going to be able to do it. Ultimately, we may not even get out of the web with our own egoistic desires. But the homework that you can do is click into your dharma, have total belief in yourself, and observe all the forces that stand between you. Become intimately aware of those, and that's then how you then go out and help the rest of mankind to do likewise. <laughs>